Hey everyone, my name is Udit. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about the architecture, product and systems design interview that typically comes up in Facebook's technical program manager on-site interview loop. At the end of this video, you should have a really good understanding of what to expect in this interview, what your interviewers are looking for and a couple of tips on how to prepare for it. As a quick introduction, I'm from Prepfully. We offer mock interviews with someone who's worked in your target company or role alongside a host of other interview prep services. So on our website, you can find recorded interviews, interview questions, interview guides, and lots of other stuff. In this context, we've got a bunch of Facebook TPMs who've been helping candidates with interviews and advice. They've put together a lot of helpful content, and this video is a good example of it. So on to the architecture, product, and systems design interview. It's such a mouthful. For those of you who are wondering what this is, this is one of the five interviews that creates Facebook's on-site TPM loop. The others in this loop are the technical project retro, the program sense interview, the partnerships interview, and the behavioral and leadership interview. Each of these interviews is typically about 45 minutes long. So in a nutshell, this particular interview focuses on your ability to solve an ambiguous problem that you previously haven't solved in one of your past roles. So basically a new topic and seeing how you respond to it. It covers a really wide breadth of themes from product sense and metrics to system design, more like end-to-end -end architecture design, and for each of these themes, there's specific things that your interviewer is looking for. So let's look at product sense first. They're looking at how you clarify requirements, if you define a scope, how you set goals and narrow down on which goal to optimize for and which one has the highest opportunity for impact. Then next, when it comes to metrics, they're going to look at what you consider success, how you're going to track it, and how you're going to ensure that the KPIs you pick are a good reflection of progress. Next up then is the actual architectural and systems design. You're going to be assessed on how you propose a design and then break it down into its component parts, whether you're able to isolate the bottlenecks in your setup, especially those which become critical at, at scale, because scale is super important at Facebook. They're going to look at, are you willing to poke holes in your own proposal? Can you draw clear diagrams? Can you concisely articulate your reasoning when explaining constraints and deciding trade-offs? And finally, they're also going to look at your underlying program management skills that tie all of this together. They're going to look at, are you able to adapt to requirement changes or uh, can you deal with arbitrary constraints? Like we expect more than a million users will be accessing this data set simultaneously. They're also going to look at how you think about partnering with other people to drive this forward, who the people involved would be, as well as how effectively you can communicate. But keep in mind that these other themes that I've just mentioned, they're going to be explored in much more depth in the other interviews in the loop. So don't go down the rabbit hole of purely making this interview about those themes because this interview has a very specific purpose, which is to establish how good you are at system and architectural design. Generally speaking, this is known as one of the hardest interviews for TPMs. And that's largely because how open it can start and how quickly you need to narrow down on the things that is important or that is considered important by your interviewer. I definitely recommend doing a lot of practice for this interview type upfront. There's a great guide called Grokking the Systems Design Interview and Educative, which is quite comprehensive. It might be a bit of an overkill for TPMs because it was designed for software engineers and sometimes even senior software engineers. But this is one of those things where it's better to over-prepare than under-prepare. There's also a couple of articles and sample answers which deep dive into specific use cases that we put up on Prepfully's blog. And of course, there's a question bank, which has got like hundreds of questions to practice from. What I'd always recommend is when you're ready for some actual practice and real time feedback, book a mock with one of the Facebook TPMs on Prepfully, or for that matter, with one of the Facebook engineers on Prepfully and get your readiness level assessed. If you don't want to invest into one of these formal sources, though, a quick and easy way to start getting some practice is just to pick a major product that you are semi familiar with and spend some time thinking about how you design it if you had to build it from scratch. So for instance, how would you design Facebook's newsfeed? Or how would you design the architecture of a photo sharing app? What about a new website for booking hotels? And so on. And think about the end-to-end -end aspects of this design, all the way from the user touch points and scaling those up geographically, driving performance, caching, to the backend architecture and your choices of databases, what the API would look like, how you'd speed up reads and writes through maybe indexing, partitioning, sharding, how you'd ensure data redundancy, and so on. Finally, this question can be incredibly broad, like I mentioned before. So I've got a couple of tips for the interview itself. The first is really, really make sure that you're understanding the problem that's been set in front of you. I simply can't stress this enough because one of the most common mistakes that candidates make is to jump straight into solution mode. 
So make sure you clarify stuff, define a scope and articulate it, stick to it later. Explain what your goals are and how you're going to attack the problem. Because this also lets your interviewer drive you into the direction they want. Which brings me to my second tip. Listen very carefully for feedback from your interviewer. They know that for questions like this, the scope is potentially infinite. Which is why they've got a list of themes they would like to cover in the interview so that they can assess you across the specific range of topics they're interested in. You'll regularly get hints like this. So an example of the hint could be, all right, let's assume X, Y, Z isn't a constraint. And this is actually your cue to move on to the next theme because clearly your interviewer is not interested in whatever direction you were about to take. Or on the flip side, you might be asked specifically about, okay, how about if this is going to be accessed multiple times daily by a global pool of users? And this is then your cue to go into the tangent of how you might scale your product up geographically, maybe through CDNs, or how you might drive performance through designing a cache since it'll be accessed multiple times a day. Keep in mind, these are just simplistic examples of the directions you could take. Your actual answers will be much more sophisticated and nuanced to the question you've been presented. Which then brings me to the next point. You might come up with multiple answers. In fact, you should be for the constraints that you are presented with. That is a good thing. Make sure that you succinctly mention them, explain the trade-offs, but then quickly pick one, make a deliberate decision and move on to the next topic. Finally, there will be times when you get stuck or there'll be times when you're not able to understand what the interviewer wants from you. That's all right. It happens to everyone. The only right action here is to admit that you don't know. By all means, offer the interviewer, give them an option to say that, hey, I'm not sure what the answer, the right answer here would be, but I'd like to give it a go and hypothesize what could be the right answer, but then give them the choice so that it doesn't come across as you trying to bluff. Facebook interviewers go through some really intense training that's in part designed to make sure they know how to filter out false positives so they'll know when you're making stuff up. That's basically it from me. This is our guidance from Prepfully on how to do a great job in the Facebook TPM architecture, product and system design interview. It's still such a mouthful. Once you feel ready for some practice, like I mentioned earlier, or just want a sense check of am I ready or not, book a mock interview on Prepfully with a Facebook TPM. I've included a link in the description below. In addition, I've also linked to a bunch of useful resources for this uh, particular interview. There's a written guide which goes into way more depth. There's also several sample interview questions, not just about this interview, but for TPM roles in general. Feel free to check those out. If you have follow-up questions about this interview, ask in the comments below. And if you found this video helpful, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks and good luck. Thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, please subscribe. Our website is prepfully.com. We've got lots of interview questions there. You can also schedule a mock interview with one of our experts. You can find the link in the description below. And we hope you totally rock your interview.